Uh, let's welcome uh, got it okay uh, let's welcome professor taiha this is his second last lecture uh, in this simpa school uh, so he will continuing uh, uh, his uh, lecture on the containment or, or power of ideas over to you professor taiha thank you so much um yeah, so today I'm going to move on to the next uh, part of my lectures when we're going to talk about uh, containments of uh, powers of ideals. <clears throat> so uh, as before, I'm going to focus on uh, the polynomial ring over complex numbers, and this polynomial ring is corresponding to the n-dimensional uh, projective space, so particularly it has n plus one variables. Um, so a uh, very simple uh, recall how uh, symbolic powers was defined. So if I take an ideal I in R and an, a positive integer M, then the M symbolic power of I is given to be the intersections of all prime ideal P inside the associate prime of I. And looking at the localization of the Mth power of I, uh, contract back to R. So particularly uh, from here, it's very easy to see that uh, that I to the M is always contained in I to the symbolic M power by definition, um, just because I to the M is always inside the right-hand side. Um, and so the, so the natural questions, so the natural question uh, is that for which values of M and R would we have the other containments, I to the symbolic M contained inside I to the R. <clears throat> so, um, uh, to what uh, these questions, uh, uh, which is very much related to the study of uh, different topologies uh, or ionic topologies, and also uh, very much closely connected to the ransom skoda theorem. There's a very well celebrated theorem. So let me state the theorem. Uh, so this is maybe 3.1. And this theorem. Um, was just first proved by I, Lazarsfeld, and uh, Karen Smith in around 2000 using a method in, uh, from algebraic geometry and uh, then generalized by Hoxter and Hunicke in 2001 using a uh, characteristic P method. And so what they prove is the following. Um, they prove that if I, uh, maybe I should write like this, maybe uh, I should write in a more general setting, let I be a radical ideal. So again, they're going to focus on radical ideal of big height h in a um, regular ring r, then um, for all r being a positive integers, we have we have the following containments that the symbolic HR power of I is contained in I to the R. <clears throat> so um, if you're not familiar with what it means being big height, right, then it's, uh, it's quite simple. You look at all the associated primes of the ideal and then take the, max, uh, take the maximal height, right? So maybe I should make a note here. So big height of I is the same as the height or the 
maximum height of an associate prime of i. Um, there's a uh, slightly um, more general version of this theorem that's discovered by uh, Johnson. Uh, and the proof is really not uh, much different from what uh, Hoxha and Hunicke had. Um, so again, let I be as before. So it's a radical ideal in a regular uh, uh, regular rings. Uh, we can just think think about R being just this polynomial ring. Um, um, and for any um, natural number k and a1 up to a k being non-negative integers, uh, we have the symbolic power hk plus a1 plus up to a k is contained in um, is contained in the symbolic a1 plus 1 power of i times the symbolic a k plus 1 of i. So uh, if we take a1 up to a k being all zero, uh, we're going to get back uh, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, theorem. So uh, let's look at an example here. Let's see particularly what does it give us in a very specific situation. So if we uh, look at a set of points, so let X, um, so let X be a set of point and say in P2 uh, and uh, I is just the defining ideal of X. Then uh, the big height, it's very easy to see that H uh, here is going to be two. <coughs> in fact, um, any set of point in uh, P2 would have height two. Um, and so the containments, so, so the theorem or the containments, the containment that we just saw becomes, so let's look at, uh, uh, specific value of R, right? So if, so I'm looking at this containment, okay? So if R is one, basically this saying that we have I uh, becomes so I to the two R contained in I to the R, right? So particularly if R is one, you have I squared contained in I. If R is two, you get I to the fourth contained in I squared. And if R is three, you get I to the six symbolic power containing I to the third, etc. Now uh, the first containment is kind of simple to see. Uh, so the, the 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 interesting containment will start from uh, from here. So uh, when uh, uh, after this theorem, of course, a lot of work have been uh, put forth to uh, understand the following natural questions. Can we improve this containment? This celebrated containment. And I'm I'm going to focus on this guy, on the original original containments by uh, put by I Dasfell Smith and uh, Hoxton Hunicke. <laughs> So in, in, uh, in, in an attempt to uh, improve these containments, there are, there are a number of conjectures that have been stated. Now, in order to improve this containment, there are two different approaches. Either you make this guy, this, the left-hand side larger, or you make the right-hand side smaller. Uh, one way to make the, uh, the left-hand side larger is to decrease the power, right? If smaller power, means bigger ideals. Um, one way to make the right-hand side smaller 
is to multiply with some other ideals. If you multiply with the ideals, you actually make your uh, uh, ideals smaller. Particularly, uh, one way to do that is to multiply with powers of the maximal ideals. Okay, so here I'm going to denote uh, maybe a say notation here. So M is going to be the maximal ideal. So in uh, in attempt to uh, improve this uh, this uh, 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 containments, there are two conjectures. Um, so this one is maybe I have three point four here, and this is what I call the what is called a Hubbard conjecture. And Hubbard's conjectures say that uh, again I'm going to focus on homogeneous ideal as we are now back into the polynomial rings be a homogeneous ideal and that's what people in geometry are, <coughs> are mostly interested in um, of big height h uh, then for all are being a positive integers we have I to the HR minus H plus one is contained in I to the R. So Hamon basically conjecture that we can drop the, the power on the left-hand side by H minus one. Now it's very easy to see, uh, to come up with example where if without this one, the containment fails. So uh, this one, if it's possible to prove, it'll be the best uh, possibilities uh, or it'll be the best that one can hope for. Uh, the other conjecture, so this is when uh, uh, if one wants to make the left-hand side larger. So the other conjecture is called the Habern Hunity. Conjecture. And uh, again, with uh, the same, uh, uh, I should say be a radical, maybe I would add the word radical idea here, be a homogeneous radical ideal. So, so let I be as before, uh, then, um, so, the simple statements of Huniki, uh, Hubble and Huniki containment is that uh, if we keep the left hand side being the same, so the symbolic HR power, then we can make this right hand side smaller by multiply with an appropriate power of the maximum ideal. So that's M to the R times H minus one, and then I to the R for all R being an integer. There's a slightly more uh, general forms for these containments where uh, instead of looking at HR, you're looking at I to the, so symbolic power of R times T plus H minus one. Uh, and if you remember the, um, the Mayes conjecture, you, you, you should notice where this uh, quantity comes from. And again, of course, if T is one, you are, you are back into this situation. And it should be contained in M to the R H minus one, I to the symbolic T power to the power R for all R and T being positive integers. Now, um, unfortunately, not much is known about the, the second conjecture, Harbon uh, Hunnicki conjecture, but there are counter example for the first conjecture. So let me give you uh, an example. So this is called the uh, full mass configurations of point. And uh, in this case, we're going to focus on P2, so point P2. I mean, R is going to be 
polynomialing in three variables, right? For x1 to p2. And we consider i to be the ideal uh, with three generators, x times y to the n minus z to the n, y times z to the n minus x to the n, and z x to the n minus y to the n. Uh, this is the defining ideal. of n square plus three points in P2. So let me let me give you uh, maybe an example of uh, how this configuration looks like. So uh, this, this is how it looks like when n equal to uh, three. So uh, this, this is a, a Fermat configuration of 12 points. Uh, you have, uh, four points, so nine of them here, and then three here. And what you can see is that through, uh, uh, that there's a, there are lines going through four points, right? So this side, even though it looks kind of curvy, but those are lines. So you get a lot of lines going through uh, 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 four points, right? And uh, the 12 points would be the intersections of three lines, okay? So, this is what the Fermat configuration looks like. And um, it is proof. So it is proof by, uh, maybe I should write Dumnitsky and um, Tatarch Gazinska uh, in 2013 when n equal to three. And uh, more generally by uh, Haberon and Cicilianu in 2015 for uh, all ends that if you look at the third symbolic powers, it failed to be inside uh, uh, I square. Now, if you uh, if you look back if you look back here, right? So these are the known containment. If you want to improve, right? So maybe I put that here. If you want to improve, well, if you want to improve the second ones, well, one way is to do that is to drop the power, right? So we're looking for if i to the third is contained in i square. And the other way is to increase the right-hand side, right? So uh, if you keep i to the fourth, the question is, is it inside m square i square, for example? So those are the conjectural uh, uh, containments. And uh, what uh, um, this uh, example is, uh, is telling us is that for the Fermat's configurations, uh, the conjectural containments fail because it's already failed right at the first uh, values of R, first non-trivial values of R. Uh, maybe I'll give you a, a, another uh, slightly more, uh, uh, more general, uh, or maybe, maybe more complicated uh, set of points. So maybe, maybe it looks like this. So uh, this is the uh, collection of point where you take uh, 19 triple points. So there are a lot of intersection between these lines, right? So uh, you have 12 lines. Right? So maybe I'll put down here 12 lines. And if we take I to be the ideals of 19 triple point that we see here, so for example, uh, this is a triple point, but of course there are also double point which we are not considering, right? So we only consider triple points and there's 19 of them. Uh, then it's known that uh, once again, the third symbolic power is not contained in I square. So these are the two of a very uh, 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 rare list of uh, uh, counter example to, uh, to these containments. Um, so maybe I'll give you an exercise that you can just try. So um, I don't remember what number it is, maybe 
3.7. Um, find uh, example um, where the containment I to the HR minus H plus one containing I to the R fails with R bigger than say three, right? So, so far all known in all known counter example, it always fail when R equal to two, right? So it always fail at the smallest value of R. Uh, there's, and as I said, there's not too many counter examples. So uh, among all the known counter example, there's none uh, that actually it fails for higher uh, power R here. Okay, so uh, of course, one might want to ask, so how is this containment related to the interpolation problem? So how is containment problem or conjecture uh, related to the interpolation problem. Uh, particularly, what I'm interested in is the Tchaikovsky and the Maiz conjecture. So uh, for that, I'm going to move on to uh, the next section where I'm going to talk about uh, Chutnovsky Dimayi uh, teacher and stable containment. So the connection between uh, con uh, containment uh, problem and uh, interpolation problem or particularly Chudnovsky and Demaris conjecture is uh, quite obvious in the following lemma. Uh, so I don't know what number it should be. So let me just, uh, just give it any numbers, 3.11. Um, uh, it said that the Harburn Unique containment implies Chudnovsky and the Mayi. Conjecture. Uh, particularly, if you look back at uh, uh, Harbour and Huniki containment, right? So this is the conjecture. Uh, if you look at the simple form, then this simple form will imply Chudnovsky's conjecture. The general, uh, the more general forms, this guy will imply Dimayi's conjecture. And so let's see. Uh, Let's see uh, why. So, uh, since you know this is a lecture series, and um, and uh, I should give you some proof at least, right? So uh, maybe I'll, I'll prove this uh, this uh, results because it's kind of give us an understanding uh, why containment can be used to study um, bounds for the Vashmit constant, for example. So, um, so. Uh, Maybe I'll write I for I X, right? So X is a set of point. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll write, I'll, I'll mention that. So here X in P and is a set of point. Okay. When you write I for I X, then it's very easy to see that for a set of point, it has the high and the big high are the same and they're both uh, n, so h is n. So that's the big height. Um, so suppose 
that the Hubbard Hunicky containment uh, suppose that this containment holds. Okay, that means, and let me just uh, uh, work with the, the 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 more general versions because the other uh, sim simpler version would be uh, uh, similar and actually easier to work with. Uh, suppose that you have this containment, so I symbolic power R times T plus H minus one contains in M to the R H minus one i to the symbolic power t to the power r so this is uh, uh Hubble and Hunicke containment suppose that this is true then one one thing that follows from here is if you have two ideals one contain one is contained in the other one then the initial degree of this guy has to be bigger than or equal to the initial degree of this guy right because whatever appear in here will also appear in here um, so that implies that alpha of the left hand side, right? So I to the R is, uh, or maybe T plus H minus one is bigger than or equal to alpha of the right hand side. But this alpha of a product. It's just the product of alpha, right? The least generating degree of a product of two ideals, just the product of the two least generating degrees. So this is going to be alpha of m to the r h minus one times alpha of i to the t to the power r. And because again, this is product, right? M to the power of something is just product of m with itself. Uh, and M has uh, initial degree being one, the maximum ideals are generated in degree one. So you have exactly R times H plus minus one here, and uh, sorry, uh, plus. Right, the least, the, the least, least degree of the product is just the sum of the least degree. Uh, so here, and then here, Again, power R is going to come out. So you get R times alpha of I to the power T. So now if we divide both sides by a common denominator, right? So you take alpha of I to the R T plus H minus one. And then we divide it by the power. It's going to be bigger than or equal to um, if you look at this, if you divide it by the same guy here, of course the R is going to cancel, right? So what, what we have left is alpha of I to the power T plus H minus one and divided by T plus H minus one. And uh, taking the limits, The limit of the left hand side. Of course, the right hand side is already fixed of the left hand side. As uh, R goes to infinity, right? The right hand side doesn't depend on R. So if you take the limits of the uh, left hand side as R goes to infinity, the right hand side stay the same, but the left hand side, we know that this is the definition of the Walshmid constant. What we have is alpha hat of now i is at least alpha of i to the t plus h minus one divided by t plus h minus one. Now, of course, because h is n, you basically get the various conjecture. Right, so uh, so so the statement is proof. Uh, this statement actually suggested uh, something more. Uh, so far, again, in in the proof, whatever I presented here, so far I haven't used anything, uh, any um, uh, assumption from the fact that H uh, acts as a set of points. Right? So all I have used so far here is that 
the Harbor and Hunicke containments is satisfied. So if the, so, so the, the same argument would hold for any ideals, any radical homogeneous idea, as long as you have these containments, right? And if, this con if we have this containment, what we derived is that the Boschmidt constant is bounded by these expressions, where if you look at an ideal in general, uh, each, the big high is no longer necessarily n. It could be any big high. So this suggests that what should be the corresponding uh, inequality for uh, a radical homogeneous ideal in general of big high h, okay? <clears throat> All right, so, uh, so let me um, make a remark here, another remark here. Uh, can, yes. uh, can you state the conjecture in terms of the Boltzmann constant? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? Can you state this conjecture in terms of the Boltzmann constant? Uh, the second one, Harper and Neukic. Uh, conjecture in terms of Boltzmann constant. Uh, uh, I, I don't quite understand because, uh, uh, because Harper and Hunnicke con uh, conjecture is about containment of ideals. So uh, and I, okay. and and the Walshmit and the like constant. To see it, uh, okay, continue, continue. Uh, and and the Walshmit constant appear in Tudnovsky and Demai's conjecture. So so if you if I if I move back um, to my uh, to my last, I think to my last lecture, uh, this is what the Tudnovsky's conjecture state. It said that. The Walshmit uh, constant of an ideal of a set of point is bounded below by this quantity, and the Demais conjecture um, generalized that. They say that the Walshmit constant is bounded by this quantity, where you are allowed to take alpha, of the t symbolic power of the ideal, instead of just the first power. Okay. okay so, okay. No, so Chudnovsky and the Demais conjecture is about the Walshmit constants, and this conjecture comes from comes from uh, come from the interpolation problem, right? And uh, what I'm talking here today is about containments. Conjecture about containments are power of ideals. Uh, we do not know if these containments are true. In fact, we do know that uh, this containment already fails, right? However, if we know, if we somehow happen to know that this containment is true, then what I sh have just shown is that that would imply that Tudnovsky and the Mai conjecture are true, right? So the Mai the conjecture, let me recall the Mai the here. The Mai uh, state exactly what uh, this is saying. Alpha hat of i of x is at least alpha of i of x to the power t plus n minus one divided by n uh, t plus n minus one, sorry. Right? And so for, for us, because we know that for ideal point, H is exactly N. So uh, this quantity is exactly the same as this quantity. That, does it, does it uh, make it a little bit uh, clearer? Thank you very much. Okay. Um, thank you uh, for <laughs> slowing me down. Sometimes I'm getting excited and I move a little bit too fast. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so, so the remark here, maybe I put a number here, 3.12. Just to have number. Um, if you look at this proof again, uh, all we are using is this containment, and then at the very end, to get this desired uh, inequality, we take the limit when r goes to infinity. So in fact, you do not need to know this containment for any r. All you need to know is, well, you have this containment for infinitely many values of R so that you can take the limit, right? So the first remark is to establish, to imply the Nimai and Chudnovsky conjectures, we only need Havern, Hunicke, containment 
for infinitely many values of R. So that's, that's an important thing. So you don't have to prove for all R, all we need to do is to establish this containment for infinitely many values for R. And, uh, and one way to ensure that you have this containment for infinitely many value of R is to say, well, the containment should be true for all R big enough, right? Uh, to avoid, remember that we have, uh, we have counter example to this containment. So one naturally might th think that uh, there should be, there might be counter example to this containment as well. But a counter example for this containment is uh, happen for a very small value of R. In fact, R is two. There's no known example when R is bigger than two. So the question is, and, and so the hope is that even if there could be counter example for this containment, which we don't know, uh, but if we take R big enough, we can actually avoid the counter example, right? And so uh, to make this, uh, this uh, uh, conjecture slightly uh, weaker, right? So maybe I will state the uh, stable containments. Equal stable containment. And so I'm stating, restating the same, uh, the same containment, right? So this is stable aberrant. Basically, say that uh, you have i to the hr minus h minus one plus one contained in i to the r for all r big enough, right? And uh, stable Haber uh we want i to the hr to be contained in m to the r h minus one i to the r again for all r big enough. And in fact, uh, having this containment for all R big enough is one way to ensure that we have the containment for infinitely many values of R, but uh, in practice, we do not really need that much. We Again, all we need is some containment for infinitely many values of R. So maybe I'll, st I'll sit here or um, maybe or uh, more generally. or more generally, let me state even the full containment. So I to the R T plus H minus one containing M to the R H minus one, I to the T R for infinitely many values of R. So this is the now the, the, the stable containments. And uh, if we can establish the stable containments, then we have Chudnovsky and Dimai, right? So let me make a, again a remark. That stable Hamman Huniki, uh, whatever version it is, implies the Mai and Chudnovsky, right? Okay, so, 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 um, <clears throat> so, so, so next, um, uh, I'm going to move on to the techniques that we use. And as I mentioned before, is, is the technique of specialization. So I'm going to talk about specialization in more details. Uh, and hopefully you, you, you'll see uh, what I was talking about last time. So specialization. Um, so uh, let's let's talk about uh, a specialization from a, a general uh, point of view. 
and then we'll focus on point specializations following cruel. So this is exactly uh, how cruel defines specialization in uh, in the uh, in in the forties. Uh, let me give you definitions. Three point fifteen, I think. Um, and this is by Krull in 1948. Uh, so let X represents just for shorthand, represent the variable X zero up to X N. So instead of writing the variable all the time, we just write X. Um, let A uh, be a point in our parameter space. If you recall last time when we talk about general and very general set of points, uh, the specialization specialization at A, so it's attached to this vector A, uh, is a map which we denote by pi of a, and this map go from uh, the set. So it's a, a, just a set map, right? From the uh, set of ideals inside. So you look at the field extensions and you look at the polynomial bring over this field extension. So the variables are still axial up to x end, but the field now are uh, uh, the field extension with the uh, new indeterminate z, z uh, to the set of ideals in just the usual polynomial ring. Uh, given by, so this map is given as follows. So uh, if you take an ideal i, so this ideal i is of course inside this polynomial ring, right? So variables are again x uh, in, in the, the axis, but in the coefficients, you're allowed to have functions or rational function in z, right? So it's gonna be, so I'm going to look at um, f of z, and x, right? So this is a, a polynomial inside i. So it variable is going to be z, and it coefic its coefficients are rational functions. Uh, sorry, the variable we can uh, are going to be x, and and coefficient are going to be rational function in z. But I would only look at those that has no denominator on the z. Right, and and then I evaluate that at a. So substitute a for z. Right. So this is uh, this is a uh, um, the precise definitions of specialization, and uh, maybe I'll give you an example. And again, this example also exhibits one fact that. Specializations is not as simple as just specialized a collection of generators, uh, because this is a map on the ideal, and you can't just go and, and say, well, if the ideal is generated by a bunch of polynomials, uh, again, with uh, uh, in the variable x with rational co uh, coefficient in z, then I can just specialize a for z, and then, and then I get the, the specialization of the ideal. That's not true. And the, and the example is the following. So if I take the ideal i to be x, uh, maybe two generator, uh, x and x plus uh, y, z. So this is of course inside c, uh, z, and x, right? That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's an ideal generated by two elements, 
And these are, uh, of course, two generators. Now, of course, you can see that these two generators are chosen in a very odd way because there's an axia and there's also an axia where you can just go in and cancel it, right? So in, uh, let me just, uh, sorry, uh, let me just say this. So this is Z, there's only one variable Z and then there are two variable X and Y, okay? And then I'm specializing this at the point zero, right? So then if I'm looking at pi and A is now my uh, zero, right? So the, the matrix full of zero, or in fact, in this is just one, uh, there's only one variable Z. So then in A, it's just a number. So it's the, uh, the value number zero. If I apply this, I can't just say that I'm going to substitute Z uh, being zero in here. I, I, can't, I can't substitute zero here, right? So this is not going to be the same as X and then X plus zero. Right, because this is just x. Because when you have y times zero, it's gone. And this ideal is x. In fact, in fact, the correct answer for, for this ideal i, as you will see, is that uh, because I did uh, create this extra uh, uh, x for, uh, for, for, for no reason, I can just forget about this x. And think about um, uh, think about uh, this as um, well. May maybe that is not even the case. So let me just tell you what uh, pi zero of i should be. It should be x and y. So um, yeah. So you can get rid of this uh, x. And again, y z because z is a is is an element in the field. So when you generate an ideal, you can forget about z. Right, Z, you can think of it as one. So you have the generator X and Y. If you specialize X and Y, you just get X and Y. So this should be the right specialization. And if you specialize the generator, you get the wrong one, okay? However, so what is nice about, uh, what is good about uh, specialization is even though it's not true that you can just go and specialize the generators, but you can almost always do that. So it is always the word almost, right? And it means, for us means on an open subset, you can do that. And so a theorem, and this is due to cruel, uh, basically say that, uh, so first maybe I'll write, uh, maybe just let I and J be ideals in this extension rings, a field, polynomial ring over this extension field. Uh, uh, suppose that I is given by a bunch of polynomials. So F1, Z, X, F, Q, Z, X. We know that you can't just go and specialize by setting Z to A. However, then, there exists an open subset. And again, then just mean that it's empty. W of the parameter space, such that if you specialize this ideal with respect to a vector inside W is the same as specializing uh, uh, the generators. So we cannot always do that, but as this example is saying, however, there's an open subset where instead of looking at zero, if you look at A, when A sit inside that subset, then you can actually do this specialization by simply specializing uh, the generators. Um, the second uh, uh, part of the theorem basically say specializing or at least this probably works uh, uh, as well with product and some uh, and, and, and sorry in and, and intersection of ideals right so there exists an open then subsets u inside a parameter space 
such that for all A inside U, what we have is that if you specialize the intersections, you it's the same as specializing each of them and then look at the intersections. And if you specialize the product, it's the same way. And there are example where it's not true to, uh, to take U to be the whole space. So U, there will be value A where this identity are not, or this, this equalities are not true. Okay, so uh, what this is telling us is that uh, because of this open subset, if we specialize once, then we have one open subset, okay? So, uh, and, 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 and uh, or maybe I sh should put a corollary here. 3.18 corollary is that if we start with um, uh, maybe let's, so again, uh, let XZ be the be the set of S generic point, as we have seen before, in Pn over Z, Cz, okay. Uh, then for fixed values of M, R, and L, there exists an open dense subset. U and of course it's going to depends on this uh, parameter M, R and L inside the uh, parameter space. Such that if you specialize for all A inside this M, R and L, if you specialize the symbolic power of this generic set of points. So this is the M. Uh, it's the same as looking at the ideal of the specialized set of point and its symbolic bounds. Uh, and it also works when you specialize a product. So maybe MZ here to the power L, uh, I, to the power R of XZ. It's the same as you look at M to the power L times I of XA to the power R. So what this is saying is, we know that in general, specializations and, uh, uh, and product and, and, and intersection do not work as well. However, on an open subset, Taking special specialization of product or intersection is the same as taking product or intersection of specializations. So that applies to symbolic power because symbolic power is just intersection of powers. And again, product and usual power. Uh, and so this gives us a strategy to prove uh, Chudnovsky and Demais and Demais conjecture. So maybe I'll I'll state it here and then uh, I'll should be done for today. So uh, strategy to prove uh, Chudnovsky and Imayi conjecture for, and let me just put sufficiently general point. And we'll see why it has to be sufficiently general point. Um, so the strategy is we're going to establish containments or inequalities that we want for the 
set of generic points. There's only one collection of generic points. So at least the points are known. So it should be easier to establish any containment that we want or any inequality that we want. So established. Desire. Containment. Or inequalities. For the generic set of points. Of points in this guy. And then we specialize, right? So use specializations to get the desire containment or in inequality for a general set of points in P and. And again, I put general in quotation because we don't know how general it has to be. So let me give you an example. Uh, maybe this is a result by uh, Excuse me, 3.19. This is by uh, uh, Tohaneu, Tohaneu, and uh, C in 2019. And what they prove is that they established uh, Harbour's containment. Right. So they prove that I of the genetic set of point to symbolic power, again, H is now N, contains in I to the power R for all R big enough. So the stable Harbon containments for the generic set of point, right? So what we are doing is that now if I use specializations, I know that if I fix the powers, right? If I fix a power, there's an open subset so that if I specialize the symbolic powers, I get the symbolic power downstairs. If I specialize the power, I get the power downstairs. So particularly that leads to, I, if I look at the specialized set to the same guy, it contained in I to this uh, same power here. However, remember that the reason why we have this uh, uh, containment is because you know that this is the same when you specialize, right? And this is the same when you specialize. But this specialization only holds for uh, A inside some open subset depending on this value R. Okay, so if one wants to establish the uh, stable Harbon conjecture, meaning uh, it should be uh, a containment for all values of R, you have to get the uh, A to be the intersections of all these open subsets, right? So basically what this is implying is that uh, stable Harbon containment or conjecture holds for any set X A with A inside the intersection of all this U R where R run from, or maybe R is big enough. So there's infinitely many open subset and you have to take the intersection. That's why it's true for very general set of points. So true for a very general set of points. And the same idea uh, that people use to obtain 
uh, 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 the stable harbor and Huniki containments, and that implies uh, uh, Chudnovsky and Dimai's conjecture for a very general set of points. So the task that we, uh, for, for us, when we start looking at this problem is to somehow come up with a way that either you can find one open subset that works for all power R, meaning you have to find one open subset that works for all, uh, all these specializations, or you can only do specialization once for one power. And, uh, and our approach is to take the later. We, we do specialization for one power, but we prove that if you get one power, somehow you will, you will get stable power, uh, uh, one, one containment, somehow you will get stable containment later on. So that's the, uh, that's the new uh, uh, addition to the problem that, that we are giving. And, uh, and that's what, that's what we are, I'm, I'm going to talk about in, in my next lecture. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, just one uh, question regarding to this stable harbor condition. Are you fixing the height every time? Well, yeah. So if I because I'm fixing uh, uh, the 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 ambient the ambient space, right? So we are looking at a set of point inside P n. So for a set of point inside P n, the high is the big high is always n. Right. If we, if I look at an idea of a sub variety of P n then the big high could be different, right? But if it's at a point, meaning zero dimensional uh, sub, sub variety, then, then uh, because it has zero dimension, so the high has to be n. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so actually it's a very good question that what happened if you look at ideals, more general ideals, meaning ideals that are uh, defining ideal of uh, sub variety, not necessarily a set of point. Somebody tried it. Yeah, so we also look at, uh, for example, uh, determinantal ideals uh, or um, the defining ideals of uh, a star configurations. Yeah, but but is is uh, that's still quite quite open? Uh, um, we we look at uh, determinantal ideals and and star configuration just because. For those classes of ideals, we understand the symbolic powers very well. We know exactly what a symbolic power looks like. So we can actually use combinatorial techniques, just counting techniques to prove this kind of containment. Okay. Uh, uh, are there any, thank you very much. Uh, are there yeah. any questions in the chat box? Uh, no one? No, oh, okay, there are no. Uh, are there any questions uh, from the audience? Uh, thank, uh, in, the, in this case, uh, let's thank the speaker once again. Thank you very much, Professor Ha. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, uh, can you explain uh, what, what are you going to do in the final lecture tomorrow? Yes. Yeah, so in the final lecture tomorrow, I'm going to talk about a method that we employ so that we can avoid uh, taking uh, one open subset for every R. So the method that we, we, we employ is to apply specialization for one power only. And, uh, and then after, if you apply specialization for one power, you would have one containment down here for a, very, for a fixed value R. And then from that fixed one containment for fixed value R, we prove that you get the same kind of containment for R beginner for this, so that you get a stable containment. So that's, and, that's uh, uh, what was uh, the reason why uh, they are keeping the ring as regular in the ideal when uh, you were discussing about the inequalities. So, um, so, so for for uh, for people, I mean, so 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 this problem originated from Harbin's uh, study, and Harbin is uh, is an algebraic geometer, and for for algebraic geometer, uh, their rings is always um, fully normal rings, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, the, the 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 class of uh, rings in general that exhibit a lot of nice property as polynomial ring would be the class of regular rings. But mm -hmm. uh, of course, for people working in these problems, the rings are always the polynomial ring corresponding to the projective uh, space. Yeah. Uh, I was I was just speculating the same because uh, all the examples are over the polynomial ring. So polynomial rings mm -hmm. are generally right. 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 And, and, and that's because our approach, I mean, our, our 
purpose was still coming from the interpolation problems that happened in the polynomial rings. But if you only care about the containment itself, not, you know, Chudnovsky, Dimayi conjecture or interpolation problems, if you only care about the containment, then it makes sense to ask about containment inside any kind of ideals, uh, any kind of rings that you want. So you could start with regular rings or you could go to rings, uh, uh, any, 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 um, and any nice class of rings that you want, maybe excellent and uh, um, essentially finite types over a field, for example, uh, or even rings uh, with uh, uh, over a, a positive characteristic, right? So, uh, so the containment problem itself is stated for uh, any ring in general. And there are people who study containment problems uh, with rings that are not necessarily polynomial rings. Yeah, one very per particular question. So are there some setup for the monomial cases too? Uh, okay, that's a very good question. So yeah, so the containments that I stated is known to be true for square free monomial uh, uh, square free monomial ideals. And that is uh, that's proof in my uh, in my uh, previous work with uh, Susan Susan Cooper, uh, Robert uh, Embrys and, and Andrew Hoffel. Uh, it's not true for monomial ideal in general. So there's counter example for monomial ideals, uh, but for square free monomial ideals, it is true. And, and the proof uh, for those containments are very combinatorial, um, just counting techniques. And what's the trouble with non square free case? Uh, that's a counter example uh, because uh, for square free, uh, it's radical ideals, right? So um, you don't have embedded prime, but for monomial ideals in general, you might have embedded prime and that create problems. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Now I understand. Thank you. Thank you very much, Taya. Professor. You're welcome. Thank, thank uh, you for your attention. Thank the speaker once again. Thank you very much. Now you can sleep well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'll see you, uh, I'll see you again tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good night. Have a good day. Bye, everyone.